Hello readers, I'm Amy. Change of location today. I'm trying to use more of my library and my filming to kind of give you a better sense of the space and show it off a little and also this rocking chair is just really comfortable. But today we are going to talk about my next week-long reading challenge. I had two books by Indian authors come in from the library and I have two books by Indian authors on my shelf as well. So going to make it an Indian authors week. This uh, challenge was inspired by books with Emily Fox. She picks a random shelf out of a TBR, out of a, yeah, a TBR jar to figure out what she's going to read for the week. I'm a little more of a mood reader and with how many library books I've checked out I'm trying to like stick with a theme every now and then. So this week it's Indian authors. I have two audiobooks and two physical books so far. Maybe I'll find something else throughout the week, but um, Technically, I started it yesterday, although I'm reading like so many other non-Indian authors in the last couple days, like as I've tried to finish up some books. So going to technically start it today, which at filming is Monday, so I'm going to continue it until Sunday night. But I have um, Avni Doshi's Burnt Sugar, which in the Wikipedia summary that I have up, it's called Girl in White Cotton. I don't know why they changed the name. I actually like Burnt Sugar better. That just sounds really interesting. In Burnt Sugar, we're exploring a mother-daughter relationship. The mother is having memory issues. The daughter feels really z resentful towards the mother about her childhood and the fact that she doesn't remember anything now. That's pretty much all I know about this. I feel like just just looking at the cover, because yeah, we're gonna ju judge a book by its cover here. Looking at the cover, it makes me think of more literary fiction, so I am nervous about this one, but I got an audiobook and audiobooks have been doing really well for me lately. The second audiobook that I got from the library is The Palace of Illusions. I am not going to say this whole author's name, I'm just gonna say Chitra because I'm going to butcher the rest of it if I even try and the author does not deserve that. But Chitra wrote The Palace of Illusions. This one I started a little earlier this morning, it's going really well because I'm checking in in the afternoon for the start of this video, but it's it's kind of a mythology. Um, says the novel traces the princess Panchali's life beginning with her birth in fire and following her spirited balancing act as a woman with five husbands who have been cheated out of their father's kingdom. Panchali is swept into their quest to reclaim their birthright, remaining at their side through years of exile and terrible civil war involving all the important kings of India. Meanwhile, we never lose sight of her strategic duels with her mother-in-law, her complicated relationship with the enigmatic Krishna, or her secret attraction to the mysterious man who is her husband's most dangerous enemy. And in reading this so far, it's it's a very like storytelling atmosphere. Um, the book is described as half history, half myth, and wholly magical. Uh, you just have like, I think it's a brother and sister who are going back and forth between telling the story of their father and just kind of setting the scene. And it's, it's really interesting so far. I'm liking it. I'm holding out hope. The other two books that I have have been on my TBR for years. I have The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. I this and The Lowlands, I think, are her most well-known books, or The Lowland. That one I read and I loved, so I got the namesake. This one's about the Ganguly family from Calcutta, trying their best to become Americans even as they pine for home. The name they bestow on their firstborn betrays all the conflicts of honoring tradition in a new world, conflicts that will haunt the son in his own winding path through divided loyalties, comic detours, and wrenching love affairs. Um, this one I'm almost, I'm also like a little bit nervous for. A lot of the reason that I'm doing this week-long reading challenge when I am is because of the library books that came in, so I thought I would make a theme of it. But my mood is up for something with a little more action and the books that I'm looking at just don't feel like that, but hopefully it goes well anyways. And last one is by Arundhati Roy. Her most famous book is The God of Small Things, I believe. I have not read that. I got the Ministry of Utmost Happiness at Barnes Noble. I was lo looking for books that included intersexuality and I was told that this might include that. I don't know. I can neither confirm or deny because I haven't read the book. 
This one is an intimate journey across the Indian subcontinent from the cramped neighborhoods of Old Delhi and the roads of the new city to the new and the roads of the new city to the mountains and valleys of Kashmir and beyond where war is peace and peace is war braiding together the lives of a diverse cast of characters who have been broken by the world they live in and then rescued patched together by acts of love and by hope so yeah this i i don't think this is going to be an action packed week but i have been looking forward to a lot of these books for a while so Wish me luck, and now we can scoot on forward to my first check-in. Hey everybody, uh, don't mind the noise in the background. That's the little electric fireplace. Hopefully, at some point, I will figure out how to edit my audio. Um, I might just include like a little, a, a couple of moving library clips or something in here, since I keep switching positions anyways to show off my library, so. Maybe I'll edit that in here. But just a check-in, it is Monday evening. I am, I believe, six or seven chapters into The Palace of Illusions. I'm really enjoying it so far. It's got, it's definitely this kind of mythology storybook feel to it. Um, it doesn't feel like it's taking itself too seriously. It's not like literary fiction or something. So I'm, I'm enjoying that. That's a pretty light read that I'm getting really invested in, and it's got a lot of feminist discussions in it, so that helps. Burnt Sugar is the one that I started on Sunday, <laughs> even though I recorded the beginning of this vlog earlier today, but I, I had meant to start my Indian, my week of reading Indian authors on Sunday, and Sunday was the day that I was finishing up a bunch of other books and I had started Burnt Sugar with the intention of having Sunday be my first day. Um, Burnt Sugar, I did not make it very far. I think I was maybe two chapters in, and I just didn't care. Um, I had enough other stuff going on during the day that I was working on while listening to the audiobook that I don't know that I was really paying that much attention, but with the mother-daughter relationship, like, I have a lot of questions about it, but... It just, I don't know, it was taking its time with setting everything up, and I'm like, I need to move on to something else. Um, especially because I had just finished a book that I felt like was putting me in a little bit of a slump also. I don't know if it's just me looking at this viewfinder, but I feel like I'm a little out of focus. I guess I'll figure it out in editing. So, <laughs> there's those two audiobooks. DNF'd, Burnt Sugar continuing with Palace of Illusions um, for tonight. I'm not going to continue Palace of Illusions for the rest of tonight because it's an audiobook on my phone. And my current rules include no electronics besides recording on this camera after nine o'clock. It's something that's really been helping me um, kind of set this schedule to have better sleep. I've been significantly more productive since I have changed some of my sleeping habits. But... For the last hour or so before I go to bed, I was going back and forth between the namesake and Ministry of Utmost Happiness. I finally decided on Ministry of Utmost Happiness because I've read Jhumpa Lahiri before, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to enjoy that book. This is the one that I've heard different things on, and I'm just, I'm not sure what to expect. So I want to go ahead and start this and see what it's like, and... If I'm not into it, I can move on to the namesake, which I'm fairly certain I'm going to enjoy. So that has been my check-in, and I will see you in the next clip. Okay, so little check-in. I am 30-something percent of the way into Palace of Illusions. It's still got that storybook feel. Um, I'm not sure if it's going anywhere right now. I'm at that point where even 30-some percent in, I've been listening to it for over four or five hours. So I'm like, can we 
do something. Um, so I, I'm kind of putting that book on pause for today just to kind of refresh myself. And I had started reading The Ministry of Utmost Happiness the other night. I read like the first chapter, which is more of an introduction, really. And then last night I'm like, oh, I'll read a little bit before bed. And two hours later, <laughs> I'm still awake and I can't sleep and I'm reading this. So this is actually going really well. I feel like I've got complicated feelings on this. So it's not really my style of of writing, I guess. Um, it seems to be a little more embedded in Indian history that I don't know anything about. Um, talking a little bit about politics. It's almost feeling more literary fiction, which isn't something that I would typically have a good time with, but I really want to see where we go with the characters. So it does start off with this baby being born that scares its mother because it's intersex, which that's a whole other conversation. But <clears throat> the child is intersex. They have both male and female parts. The female parts are kind of underdeveloped. And I, I had to look up some summaries of this that I can link down below if you want to know more but it sounds like the father had the kid go through surgery to close up the female parts and then later on um, the kids going around town and they see this trans woman which I, I say trans woman really loosely I will get to that in a second but they see this woman they're fascinated by her <clears throat> and follow her to her place which is this whole kind of community living space for more people like her so as as for the trans woman and the reason i say that i say that loosely the community <clears throat> i'm not totally clear on this it's it's been a while since I've studied this area of sexuality. But in India, there are these people called hijras. Um, I'll have to put a definition up on the screen, but from what I remember, it's, it, I think it's a mix of people who are intersex or trans. And I always had this idea that they were looked up to as kind of a holy people being this third gender um someone that people can kind of look up to but in this book they're really they're treated like trans people around the world are treated so that's definitely something that i want to learn more about i have heard of hijras previously i've learned a little bit about them here and there but like i said it's been years since i've really looked into that definitely need to brush up on that a bit but the representation in this book is really what's pulling me forward. So I'm interested to see where we go with these characters. Um, I paged through the book a little bit. I haven't like read ahead, but I paged through and I feel like this might end up being somewhat similar to Girl, Woman, Other in that I think we're going to be getting a bunch of different stories that maybe loosely connect at the end of the book but we'll see my my hopes are really getting high for this like it's not something that i think i would typically like but i'm enjoying this so far hopefully the blowing air in the background doesn't bother you too much it's just this little space heater that's keeping our sunroom warm i call it the sunroom chris calls it the mudroom this is forever gonna be a fight between the two of us but it's, it's really nice and sunny out here and it's kind of, it's the cat room. So I just thought I'd hang out here for a minute for this. But Palace of Illusions, I am 81% of the way through it. Um, I was actually, I, I posted a picture to Instagram. I can go ahead and pop that in here. Editing Amy, take note. <laughs> um, and someone had commented on it. I don't, I don't have my phone with me, so I can't say who they were, but they're in this book club that's actually reading palace of illusions right now as well as another one of chitra's books so um i was invited to take part in their book club discussion i think it's just like a discussion with the club i don't think it's a live thing on youtube or anything 
Um, I can let you know more details on that if I have them just when I'm editing this vlog. I don't know if this vlog will be posted in time for that book club discussion because it's on the 20th and I have no idea when I will have this edited, but anyways. As I was saying, I am 81% of the way through Palace of Illusions. I have been invited to take part in a book club that is talking about it. And I'm still really taking my time with this one. This whole week seems very slow. And I don't know if it's, I mean, the schoolwork I have going on is kind of slow. Um, the reading that I'm doing is definitely slow. Not to say that I'm not enjoying it because I am. It's just every, everything has slowed down. It's like I'm swimming through molasses this week. But Palace of Illusions, like I've said, it's, it's like a mythology retelling. Um, if I had to compare it to something, I would say it's kind of like reading a retelling of the King Arthur legend or like reading about the War of Troy where it's this really long epic and I'm enjoying it and I like the mythological aspects to it and I like learning a well-known retold story from a different country, but it's so slow. And again, that's not a bad thing. I just, besides Palace of Illusions, I don't know that I'm actually going to finish any other Indian authors this week, honestly. Um, I picked up, what was it called? Ga Gatra Gotra, I think is what it was called? I know it started with a G and it had an A and an O. That was like an Indian novella and it seemed like it was taking place over this entire life, but it was a novella so you know it's short and I was not absorbing what was going on. So I went ahead and sent that one back to the library. Palace of Illusions, which I'm almost done with, and then I also have Ministry of Utmost Happiness. I haven't gotten too much farther in this. This one, I don't know what to think. I like the gender aspects to it. Again, it's a super slow book, but I am enjoying it, but I don't, I, I don't think I'm gonna finish it. This book, I mean, it doesn't seem terribly long. It's like 430 pages, but the writing is pretty dense. It's a very slow moving book. Um, I, I don't know if it's an Indian author thing or if it's just the books that I'm picking. So by all means, Correct me if I'm wrong or tell me down in the comments if you know the answer to this. But I know with a lot of Swedish authors that I've read, um, particularly Frederick Bachman, but it tends to be with Swedish authors that I read that most of those books are very slow moving. And between the Jhumpa Lahiri book that I've read, and that was like a couple years ago, and getting through Aaron Dottie Roy and getting through Chitra, Again, these Indian authors seem very, very slow and very character focused. Again, it could totally be the books that I'm picking up, but I don't think that I'm going to finish this one in a week. Like I still, I wanted to extend my week long reading vlog for this to maybe like Monday or Tuesday night, just because there have been times when I have not been in the mood to read this week and I want to give them a fair chance, but I don't think I'm going to finish this. I know I'm going to finish Palace of Illusions. I also had The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri that I wanted to read this week. And again, I don't know. I don't even know that I'm going to get to start that one. Tell me, is it an Indian authors thing? Are they all just... They, they all feel kind of like slow character building epics. I feel like I need to end this clip because I am just repeating myself over and over. But none of this is to say that I'm not enjoying myself. I'm just, I'm getting into this mood where I'm like, okay, I need to speed up. So this might just end up being added to the drawer that I made in my nightstand, which is now the unfinished books drawer. <laughs> so I'm just gonna have to have a week long reading vlog about finishing what's in that drawer. And I can tell you that is gonna be a slow week. Anyways, see you all in the next clip. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> I look really tired right now because I did not sleep well last night for whatever reason. I have my tea, I have my rocking chair, got the heated blanket, got the fireplace, so we're all cozy this morning while I try and 
do some reading. I worked this weekend, which I usually do end up doing a little work on the weekend, so I think I'm going to take today easy. Also, not sleeping well, I'm probably going to go take like a mid-morning nap after this. I am 88% of the way through Palace of Illusions. I haven't finished it yet. I still have an hour and a half left. So I'm probably going to work on some art stuff later and listen to the rest of that. <clears throat> Ministry of Utmost Happiness, I haven't really read any more of. I don't know what to do with this. Like, I like it, but I don't really see myself finishing it because it's so slow. Um, I might finish like the little section that I'm on and see if it changes character perspectives and if it does I will put it in my drawer of shame full of books to be finished Because at least that means I won't have to keep track of characters as much. So this one Status of this is to be determined. I did end up starting the namesake because it was the only book that I got that I hadn't started yet and I wanted to because I really enjoyed The Lowland by her and I started the namesake and I, I'm already, I'm busting through, I'm a third of the way through this. Something about Jhumpa Lahiri really appeals to me. Um, similarly to the other books, it kind of, all of these books that I've been reading, except maybe Gatar Gotar, because I didn't get that far into it, but I think that one too, are like lifetime stories, so I don't know if that's also just generally kind of an aspect of a lot of Indian fiction is telling about lifetimes, but this talks about the lifetime of, I'm gonna say Gogol, it's a Russian name, because he's named after his dad's favorite Russian writer, but it kind of goes through his parents lives as immigrants and his whole life growing up in america and how um he doesn't really feel close to the homeland of his parents and something about this is just so interesting and while it's a lifetime story like the other books lahiri doesn't like sit around on anything she still takes you through the life like here's what happened in this section okay now here's what happened in this other part of his life now we're going to move on to the next part of his life it doesn't feel too rushed and it doesn't feel like she's just meandering um which i think is the feeling that i'm getting from the other books they they kind of meander through the life of these people not that that's a bad thing but jump lahiri's book is just so much faster paced than the other books i've been reading and that's really what I need right now. Um, today is Monday, so it was going to be the last day of my readathon for this. I might stretch it to tomorrow. I kind of want to just finish the namesake and finish Palace of Illusions. Because um, they're the books that I feel most dedicated to right now. But we will see how I feel at the end of the day. Um, my next check-in is probably just going to be the end of this video. So, I'm going to go take a nap and I will get back to you. Hello readers, back to finish up this reading vlog. Um, I need to start out by clearing something up. I could have sworn that Jhumpa Lahiri was an Indian author. That's what I remembered her being. It might have just been because reading The Lowland and knowing it was about India, I assumed she was Indian. In doing my anti-haul that I filmed recently, um, I saw that there was a book that she was coming out with because she'd recently learned Italian. And so she wrote a book in Italian and translated it herself, which is amazing. And I was looking under her information and she is an American author who is the daughter of Indian immigrants. So this book that I included in my week of Indian authors was not actually by an Indian author. That is my mistake. I should have checked. I'm not sure what it says about me that it's my favorite book that I read of this week, but still important to check out. I mean, she talks about an immigrant experience, so I'm sure that she gets that perspective from her parents. Um, I haven't finished this yet. I'm not quite halfway through it. I am going to finish this. Maybe this week, maybe next week. Then we have The Ministry of Utmost Happiness. I... I don't know what to do with this. <sighs> Part of me wants to unhaul it because I just don't see myself ever finishing it but part of me is still interested to see where it goes. Like, I like all of the elements of it. I like the hijras and the discussion of 
gender and but I'm not sure if there's a story with it. I've heard good things about the God of Small Things, so I might just pick that up and see if I like it and then make a decision on this book. I don't know. Like, I want to read this, but I don't know that I'm ever going to, if that makes any sense. I did finally finish The Palace of Illusions, and I believe we're meeting up on Saturday morning, my time. It's like 7 or 8 a.m. Saturday morning. We're going to be meeting up to talk about Palace of Illusions as well as Chitra's, one of Chitra's other books, which I don't think was available through any of the libraries and I wouldn't have time to read it this week anyways. And there was the novella that I DNF'd, Gotra Gotra, I think. And then, um, what's that one that I started? Burnt Sugar, which I think was just a little more literary wasn't really for me. So this is definitely my biggest fail of my weeks of reading so far. If you've read Indian authors before, let me know what you've liked or what you haven't liked down below. Is it just me or are they all very like slow, generational sort of books? It, it could just be the books that I selected, but they're all very, very slow paced. And I'm at the point like, okay, I need something that just I, I can breeze right through and finish it and like I need that sense of accomplishment right now. Um, yeah, that's gonna be it for this reading vlog, so leave your thoughts down below. Again, apologies for the mistake on Jampa Lahiri. I should have done way better about looking into that instead of assuming. Um, yeah, please like, subscribe, be my friend on social media. I'll see all of you in my next video and hopefully my next more successful week of reading one such thing or another. Bye friends.